Good afternoon, or evening, I suppose. I was thinking, don't say good morning, no matter what. My name is Pastor Carlos. It's great to be with you here. I, I know all of you, um, but it's always a joy to get to serve in this capacity and share God's Word with you. Tonight, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 13, some selected verses, and just talk about how God has equipped us and, and prepared us to be His people, to share His love with others. Um, start with the story. I changed the oil in my car once. I was your typical broke college student. I'm just trying to save a few bucks wherever I could. And so as that trouble light went on in my car, which meant it was time for an oil change, um, I immediately had the brilliant idea that it would be much cheaper and far more fulfilling if I just did it myself. So headed off to the local Napa, picked up a couple quarts of 10W30. I found the right oil filter, drove home. I'm about to start saving some money and, and DIY, and it was almost immediately thereafter that the complications began. As I tried to, to wiggle under my Toyota Corolla, which, by the way, sits about this high off the ground, um, I immediately realized I'm going to need some ramps. So I made some phone calls and uh, found a friend who had some, drove to his house, borrowed them. I'm only out about 30 minutes, still on track to do it myself. And that's when it dawned on me that I probably need something for all this oil that I'm about to unleash from my engine to land in. So I go in the kitchen. I search through all the pots and pans. Uh, think better of it because I'm married at the time. And uh, which, as you know, I'm, I'm back at Napa, this time buying an oil pan. 30 minutes later, I'm home, car's on the ramp. I'm underneath the vehicle. I pull the plug, oil plan's in place, the oil's flowing, we're doing it, and then that's when I learned that uh, those oil filters, they don't screw them in hand tight. And you know how the story ends. Back to Napa, this time on my bike because my car has no oil in it. Anyways, I did get the oil changed. Uh, it only took me about three hours. Uh, but as I sat on my couch in my oil-stained shirt, looking at dozens of oil change coupons, which I think God put there just to rub it in my face, uh, I immediately made the decision, I'm never doing that again. Now, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a mechanic, uh, but I think what made this task so difficult uh, was not simply my lack of expertise, but my lack of the right equipment. Uh, the right tool can make almost the most difficult job seem much easier. And I've learned this firsthand because over the last 15 years, I spent a lot of time on construction sites. And it, and it never ceases to amaze me how someone has thought of a tool for just about every job. I was on the Austin campus when they were building that, uh, and I saw a carpenter, let's see if I can change this, with one of these on his wrist. It's like a magnetic wristband, except his was just covered in nails, and, and one of these in his hands. A magnetic, self-starting hammer. And watching this man was mesmerizing because he was like a human nail gun. He, he was flawlessly loading nails from his wrist onto the hammer and driving them through in just two swings. And it was amazing to see him frame up a room right before my eyes. And I thought to myself, now there's a man who's figured out the best way to do his task. Well, this morning I want to talk about a task that's been given uh, to each of us. It's that task of sharing Christ's love. And like I said, as we look at Hebrews chapter 13, uh, we're going to see how God has given us the perfect tools to do that. How we are equipped, we are ready, and he is with us for us to share his love with others. If, if I just said share Christ's love, I think that's something we'd all agree on, right? Um, I mean, who here is going to be anti-share Christ love? As Christians, it's ingrained in us to let our light shine. Right, one of the first songs we learned in, in Sunday school, hide it under a bushel. No. 
we've built, or God has built, an entire ministry here on this fundamental, basic concept of sharing Christ's love with others, right? Like we only exist on the corner of 58th and 104th to share Christ's love with this community. And yet, as, as we look at the world around us in, in 2021, I'll be the first to admit that that can feel like somewhat of a daunting task, that idea of sharing Christ's love, because let's be honest, this doesn't exactly feel like the most God-friendly environment. And I have no interest in getting political in this sermon, but in a world that has 58 identified genders, that's like a riddle. How can two things have 58 combinations? In a country that just got done celebrating, not, not Pride Day, not Pride Week, but Pride Month, it just doesn't feel like there's a whole lot of room for God's view on marriage or, or man and woman. Or in, in a culture that is so quick to cancel anyone who steps outside of the agreed upon agenda or narrative, or, or in an environment where the definition of tolerance has changed from, I allow it, do I have to full on support it? This idea of sharing Christ's love can feel like a bit of a landmine. You almost think, how did this happen that over the last 20 years somehow we're the ones with the controversial beliefs? And when I ask myself that question, like, how did this happen? Or, or how did we get here? How did we go from being one nation under God to a place that is pretty overtly, systematically stripping God out of every public institution? The only thing that, that resonates with me or the only thing that makes any sense is, is we must have, and I say we as a, as a nation or as a group, as a world, we must have just forgot or perhaps we just no longer understand who God really is. Uh, far from, from, being, from finding peace in our Savior Jesus, we've decided to wage war against him. Or far from seeing God as our loving Father in heaven, he's become an adversary. The most basic things, like the Ten Commandments, right? God's loving advice to his people, which used to be so obvious, right? Honor your mom and dad. Don't steal, don't murder, don't talk about people behind their back. Fellas, don't cheat on your wives. Your life is going to be better, I promise. Is, is now like a list of castigating rules that prevent us from living life to the fullest. More and more, it's just become clear that people are choosing their own way instead of his way. And in doing so, they, they've robbed themselves or broken off any relationship they have with Christ. And now that's no longer my father, that's my adversary. And in doing so, they, they've stripped themselves of, of the peace that only God can give, right? Peace we enjoy. Peace that tells me I don't care how crazy things feel. It's all right on schedule according to his good and perfect will. Peace that assures us of, of an eternal home in heaven. Peace that reminds us no matter how lost we might feel, we know how this story ends, and it's perfectly. And rather than look to God's word for, for peace, for answers, for comfort, they've looked for it in other places. A lot of times they start right in the mirror, right? You know how many times I've heard in the last five years, Pastor, I have to love myself before I can love anyone else. Let me translate. I love me more than I love you, and in some cases, more than God.
And if that doesn't work, if I can't find peace in the mirror, well then, then maybe it's a self-help book or, or maybe it's a calming app on my iPhone. Or maybe it's just a group of individuals who are equally as lost as me. Um, or maybe I'll go for it in the trappings of this world, like money or power or, or a bigger house or, or a little faster, more luxurious car. It's sad, really. But before we throw too many stones, we all have to acknowledge that, that we were there once, too, right? I mean, as cute as we all were, we weren't born perfect. Quite the contrary, right? We were, we were dead in our transgressions and sins. Pick the worst, most lost person you know. That's how much God's love and peace belonged in our hearts. But then by God's grace, something changed. And that change happened only as God's peace, his love, his word was shared with us. And the Holy Spirit began his miraculous work of creating faith in our hearts. And as good a people as I think you all are, that's the only reason we're here tonight as a body of believers gathered together around Christ's love, growing and sharing in our common faith because God's peace was shared with us. We we're all given a second chance. God's gospel, Christ's love, was shared with us, and that's what brought us to him. That's what took us from enemies of God, because that's the course we were on, to children of God. A powerful, amazing gospel. That's why Paul wrote to the Romans in, in verse 116, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God for the salvation of Everyone who believes. The gospel message is the powerful equipment that all of us have here at our disposal as we set out to do this task. The same gospel message that worked in us, the same gospel message that transformed us, the same exact one we get to share with others as we enter into our own personal mission fields. Yes, we have an established ministry here at Divine Savior. But make no mistake about it, there's right mission fields all around us, right? It's kind of interesting how we often equate missions to, to foreign countries and these distant lands. The truth is, most of us could do a whole lot of mission work without ever leaving our neighborhood. I think that's what I like most about this place or this ministry. Is that every day throughout the school year, Monday through Friday, by God's grace, an entire mission field literally drives onto our campus and says, teach me, which here means teach me God's word. Praise be to God for all the opportunities he gives us. Because we are not lacking for opportunities, whether it be at home, in our neighborhoods, or in our own personal families, or, or here at Divine Savior, or at work with the guy across the, the office. God has given us so many opportunities to use the powerful equipment, the gospel, the life, heart-changing gospel. And so now the next question is, you know, are you ready? Are you willing to do it? And some of you might be thinking, uh, well, I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, but let me just tell you, you are. And I can say that confidently because of what we see in our next verse here in, in Romans or Hebrews 20 and 21. This is one of those arguments of, of kind of like the greater the lesser, kind of God sets the bar here and he says, if I can do this, then I will certainly do this. And so the same God that promised to bring his son back from the dead and delivered on that promise, that's setting the bar high. 
He's going to equip you for every good work. It says, May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. You don't have to be a trained theologian to be a missionary. You don't have to be able to write and deliver flawlessly a 30-minute sermon. That would disqualify me, and I went to the seminary. You don't have to write beautiful, poetic prayers. You don't have to have deep devotional thoughts. Oh, the gospel in a nutshell. John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Something that every student at Divine Savior beyond second grade can recite from memory. That's enough for the Holy Spirit to work, to start another conversation, perhaps to lead to one of these seats right here. For some reason, we've ascribed a certain level of mystique to the idea of evangelism. There's conferences and seminars, and you've got endless amounts of pamphlets and brochures and books and literature, and there's like entire wings in bookstores, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it's really not that complicated. We don't have to make it harder than it is. You want to share Christ's love with someone, just tell them your story. I believe in Jesus. And what peace that gives me. Because he died on the cross, and when he died on the cross, he took away my sins, and now I know that I'm going to be in heaven. That made Grandma's funeral much easier. And because I now have this awesome relationship with God, I get to talk to him a lot. That's called prayer. And when I pray, not only do I feel a lot better, but if I keep my eyes open, I actually see God at work in my life. I see answers. Things happen. Things that I used to think were a coincidence, now I say are an answer to my prayer. Just tell your story. It's not that hard. You know, we were talking about kids beyond second grade. You'd be surprised how many stories I've heard from parents over the last 15 years of their children. I'm talking five and six-year-olds being powerful missionaries in their families. Telling mom and dad that we should pray before we eat. Or, or encouraging dad to watch his language from the back seat. God can work through all of us. Because, spoiler alert, we're not actually doing the work. As soon as those words leave our lips, God the Holy Spirit takes over and begins working the miracle of faith. The gospel is a pretty simple tool. And it's so powerful because of what I just said. The minute it leaves our lips, the Holy Spirit's at work. I guess the last question would be, We ever seen that done? Do I have an example that I can follow? Well, the answer is yes. You see your pastors do it here every week on this stage. So, so let's leave and do likewise. That's what we're hearing from the writer to the Hebrews in our last verse. It says, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of, the way, of their way of life and imitate their faith. Now, I would just say follow the example of your Christian leaders and proclaim Christ's love. You know, I'm not going to fall into the hyperbole, which is something we love to do these days, of it's worse now than it's ever been. I mean, God did wipe Sodom and Gomorrah off the face of the earth because of their godlessness. But I do think that God's people 
need to start speaking up. It's time for the Christian church, and I don't just mean like the institutional Christian church, like the divine Savior church. I mean God's people, the Christian church. It's time for us to find our voice a little bit in this world and be a little loud and proud ourselves. The world needs to see us. They need to see us on social media, not just you know, describing our last, most recent, excellent vacation or the amazing meal that we're about to eat. They need to see us encouraging one another in love. They need to see us sharing God's word with others. They need to know by what's on there this is a family that serves the Lord. They need to hear us and see it in our, in our choices, in the things that we do, in, in our priorities. They need to see us prioritize this, worship, here, together. Your neighbors need to know this is where they can find you, either Saturday at 5 or Sunday at 9.30. Even if you were out late the night before. Or even, and I don't know if we're ready for this, even if Johnny has a super important soccer game in Weston with his club team. But then how will he get to the Premier League? He'll be fine. Get to church. They need to see us at Chick-fil-A, openly praying before we eat. Not loudly, but just as loudly as we have every other conversation. Because we thank God for his providence, even if it's a chicken nugget. There's a lot of us out there. And we need to start making some noise. Because this world needs us. And perhaps even more importantly, if I gave us all about five seconds, we could all think of someone who needs you to be their missionary. My, my intent is not to guilt trip anyone here. But as mentioned earlier, we were all given a second chance. We're here because someone, whether it was mom and dad, aunt, uncle, co-worker, friend, pastor, because someone cared enough about you and me to share Christ's love with you. So now the question is, what are you going to do with it? We can make excuses. We, we can pretend like we're not ready or, or we wouldn't know what to say or how to say it. And if we do that really well, like we might even fool ourselves into thinking it's true, but, but we'd be the only people we're fooling. Now the truth is, as I look at this group, and I include myself in that because typically I'm sitting right over there, it's obvious that God has positioned, equipped, I'll even say called this group to be his mission. To share Christ's love. We have all the tools we need. We certainly know enough to do it. And if you ever run into something or have a question you don't know, you've got lots of resources to help you with that. God has set us up to do this. Now, I'll never change the oil in my car again. Because I figured out that between my lack of knowledge and my lack of tools just doesn't make sense. But never let that be said about using the powerful 
tool God has given us. The pride-crushing, soul-transforming gospel that we all know. We are ready, we are equipped, and God is with us. So, so what else is there to say? Let's do it. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. May it guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.